During chemistry, a student said, Watch this, I put something in the teacher's coffee. I looked at Mrs. Cooper's desk where her coffee mug sat. She was writing equations on the board. That's not funny. I'm not joking. Mrs. Cooper turned around and walked to her desk. She picked up the mug and I jumped up. Don't drink that. She looked at me confused and tilted the mug. It was empty. I finished it ten minutes ago. What's wrong? Someone poisoned it. We need to get you to a hospital. The class went silent. Mrs. Cooper started to say something but suddenly doubled over. She projectile vomited all over the front row. Kids screamed and jumped back. Call 911, I yelled, but I knew ambulances took forever. Mrs. Cooper was on her knees gasping. I'm driving her, I said. I helped her to my car while she kept throwing up. The hospital was six minutes away but felt like hours. Her face was gray and sweaty. The emergency room took her immediately. They pumped her stomach while I sat in the waiting room covered in vomit. That night she called me from her hospital bed. I almost died. The doctors are still trying to figure out what the poison was. How did you know? A student told me. This weird kid sitting next to me. What was his name? He said it was Caleb Doyle. I don't have a student named Caleb Doyle. The next day, I was called to the principal's office. Principal Ewing, Vice Principal Baker, and Superintendent Johnson were all there with two police officers. We need to discuss what happened to Mrs. Cooper, Principal Ewing said. I told you. A student named Caleb told me he poisoned her. There is no Caleb Doyle enrolled here, the superintendent said. Someone was sitting next to me. Ask the other students. We did. They said that seat was empty. The police officers stepped forward. We need to search your locker and your car. They found nothing, but they kept pushing. You were the only one who knew she was poisoned. You drove her to the hospital. You had opportunity. I was trying to save her. Or covering your tracks, one officer said. For three days, I was interrogated. They brought in my parents. They searched our house. They tested my hands for chemical residue. The school suspended me pending investigation. Other teachers avoided me in the hallways. Miss Perkins wouldn't make eye contact. Mr. Swanson moved away when I walked past. Everyone thought I'd tried to kill Mrs. Cooper. Just confess, Vice Principal Baker said on day four. We know it was you. Test the coffee mug for fingerprints. Test the classroom cameras. The mug was washed. The cameras don't cover that corner. My parents hired a lawyer. The news picked up the story. Local student accused of poisoning teacher. My picture was on channel seven. Then on day five, a call came from the local middle school. They'd found a 32-year-old man dressed as a student in their seventh grade math class. He'd given his name as Caleb Doyle. When they arrested him, he had journals listing teachers he wanted to poison. Mrs. Cooper was number 12. He'd been sneaking into schools for months pretending to be a kid. The police finally tested what remained in Mrs. Cooper's coffee mug. The poison was his own fecal matter mixed in. Now they call her Mrs. Pooper.